Okay, let's get back to our top story and the axing of Nongobo Jiba and Lawrence Mkhwebu, of course, took place earlier today. The two served as Deputy National Director and Special Director of Public Prosecutions. President Cyril Ramaphosa followed the recommendations of the Mukhoro Inquiry, which found them unfit to hold office. ENCA reporter Govan Wittles has been following the story and he joins me now in studio. Govan, uh, this has kept you incredibly busy, I'm sure, especially uh, the last couple of days. What you have there are the actual letters written by the president to the two, Jiba and Mukhwebi. That's right. Uh, the president uh, formally sent them letters yesterday um, informing them that he has accepted the recommendations of the inquiry and decided to fire them um, from their positions as deputy NPA head and special director of public prosecutions. But what's interesting um, in the detail in these letters is that President Cyril Ramaphosa says to advocate Nomkobo Jiba that she lied to him uh, when she had told him that she had appointed um, a team of prosecutors from outside um, KwaZulu-Natal um, on the recommendation of then acting director of public prosecutions in the province, Simpiwe Mlochwa. Of course, when Jiba appeared at the Mahora inquiry, she said that she had done so on the recommendation of IPED. And that contradictory statement there um, has been pointed out by the president. Similarly, um, with advocate Mkhwebi, President Ramaphosa again saying that he provided contradictory um, evidence where he had claimed to have considered the representations um, of uh, uh, um, former crime intelligence boss Richard Mluli on one date and told the inquiry about a different date. So President pointing that out. But what's even more interesting here is that in their representations to President Cyril Ramaphosa, advocate Mkhwebi Jiba asked that he redeploy her to a senior position within the public service. A president has denied that request. Advocate Mkhwebi asked him to, read, to allow him to retire, and President Ramaphosa has also denied uh, Advocate Mkhwebi's request to retire. So their dismissals take effect with immediate effect, of course, so, but it needs to be confirmed by Parliament. 100%. Is what you're mentioning there over and above what was recommended by the uh, Mkhwebi inquiry? Well, this is the president's response in, uh, to in their representation. So the report was filed. Um, he then invited advocates uh, Mkhwebi and Jiba to make representations once again to him. Um, and following those representations, he sent them these letters stating the following yeah. facts. Um, and of course, from here, on the resumption of the sixth parliament, um, they will then consider the president's decision and either ratify it or they will restore Jiba and Mkhwebi to their positions. Any response yet from the two? Jiba or Mukhwebi? Only from uh, Numkoba Jiba, I have with me a press statement which was just released in the last few minutes in which she says that she finds that the inquiry had been grossly unfair to her um, and had also made several um, errors in examining the evidence and the testimony. And Numkoba Jiba goes on to say that she believes a review of the findings, uh, the report um, in the High Court would prove differently. But interestingly enough, towards the end of a statement, she says that she doesn't believe that her fate has been sealed and that her career is over in the NPA. She says that on the resumption of the Sixth Parliament, when that decision from President Ramaphosa is taken um, um, to Parliament to either be ratified uh, or reversed, that she believes she will once again have an opportunity to persuade the MPs uh, to reinstate her in the NPA, and she will continue fighting uh, for her, her, her job at the NPA, but also her status um, as the prosecutor. But Govan, how likely is that when you look at uh, how Parliament is skewed towards the ANC? How likely are they to go against their own president? Well, that will be the sixth parliament, and I suppose well, we, know we have what to the wait. Will have to be oh, at, at, from at the particular point, yeah. Uh, so true. But any other recourse, though, you know, for uh, Jiba and Mukhebi besides waiting for parliament? At this point, the. Them alluding, or at least Advocate Jiba uh, alluding to a potential High Court uh, review seems to be the direction that they will take. No response yet uh, from Advocate Mkhwebi. Um, but uh, we do know that the decision of President Ramaphosa has been widely welcomed. Uh, one of them from former top NPA prosecutor Glynis Breitenbach, now DAMP. She will, of course, be one of those people considering the President's decision if she returns to Parliament, yeah. the Sixth Parliament. But let's have a look at what uh, Glynis had to say about the president's decision. We've actually, we, we, we actually showed it just uh, a short while ago, and uh, she, uh, I think you were just basically going through those letters at that point and uh, that reaction there, and she was saying, listen, listen, you know what, this was an obstruction of justice, which brings me to the next question, which is basically, uh, can charges be brought against these two in the end? 
Well, that would be up to the new head of the NPA, Shamila Batoy, who has now received all of this communication from President Cyril Ramaphosa. And uh, the president has published um, all of the documentation. The unabridged version of the report is now available publicly. Um, he's also published the representations of both advocates Jiba and Mkhwebi and his letters to them. So it will be up to the NPA to decide which route to take next, of mm. course, pending that decision from Parliament. Okay, thank you so much, Govan Whittles, following this story. Uh, we await the, uh, I suppose, the reaction now from Mukwebi to see uh, whether, whether he's going to take this forward or not. Thank you so much.